Okay, you can all go to hell if you're gonna be like that. See if I ever try to sell an ingenious movie idea to you guys ever again. It's not like Marvel could come up with something this good. I mean, look at Thor Ragnarok. Mediocre box office results. Uh, my proposal, Thanos the Hands of Fates, blockbuster film. The fact that they shot this down was a mistake. Let's see you do better, Marvel. Hello, my name is Hunter, the movie reviewing pony, because when it comes to cinema, humans cannot be trusted. So, yeah, I tried to get Thanos the Hands of Fate into theaters everywhere, and they shot me down. But hey, I stand by what I said. It's not like Marvel could do any better. Little did Hunter realize, Marvel actually did do better than his dumb movie that he proposed grossing over $2 billion at the box office. He would then slowly drifting to an unbreakable state of depression from which he would never recover. Wait, why would I do that? Because you're pathetic and creepy and you will never get Lyra heartstrings to like you. Wow, jeez, why you gotta drag me down like that? You would do the same if you were in my position trapped inside of this tuna container-sized supercomputer. Well, I don't need to take this from a tuna container-sized supercomputer. I'm a successful movie critic. You can't even break 10,000 subscribers. Screw you! Watch me! Ah, good. Marvel Studios. They're very good at making money, and Disney has the decency to leave them alone. Why they couldn't do the same for Star Wars, I will never know. Of course, maybe I just answer my own question. The reason they're being left alone is because some of their movies are the highest grossing movies of all time. It's not uncommon to see a Marvel movie grossing over one billion dollars at the box office. And I can see why people are on this bandwagon. Marvel movies are so good that they have us sitting through five minutes of credits for 30 more seconds of movie. Unlike their DC counterparts, Marvel does everything right. A wide range of captivating characters, decent villains, original plot lines, and a wide open expansive universe. Oh, and Stan Lee, who is an asset in and of himself. You're awesome, Lee. We love you. But Marvel truly shines and rakes in exorbitant amounts of money when they culminate all of their characters into one movie. That's why these big group up movies like Guardians of the Galaxy, Civil War, and Age of Ultron do insanely well. Case in point, the highest grossing one of them all, Avengers Infinity War. Holy damn it, Christmas! There's a lot of characters in this movie. I mean, just look at this poster. That's a lot. We knew that this movie was coming, and we knew that this was what the last 10 years of movies have all been leading up to. We knew that a lot of these characters were probably going to die, and we knew that Robert Downey Jr. was getting tired of playing Iron Man. But somehow Marvel's managed to stranglehold him into at least one more movie after this one. I wasn't really focusing on the trailer distribution for this movie. Actually, I wasn't really focusing on anything for this movie. Somehow I managed to avoid all of the internet spoilers for this, despite the fact that my review is coming out really late. And if I may say so myself, I think I did a pretty good fucking job. Even though all the evidence I did gather pointed to Thanos winning in the end. You Ron Perlman looking motherfucker. This movie was actually announced around the time that Marvel was announcing a whole bunch of projects. It was during their big Phase 3 reveal, which included but wasn't limited to Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Black Panther, and Thor Ragnarok including the upcoming Captain Marvel for later this year. One thing I didn't like is that they announced that this was a two-parter, which, oh, oh boy, do I love those two-parter movies. Seriously though, just make a longer movie. We'll watch it. Like I said, we'll sit through five minutes of credits for 30 more seconds of movie. We'll sit through two and a half more hours of actual movie. I mean, sure, we all thought Lord of the Rings Return of the King was a long movie, but we watched it. It's called an intermission. We need more of them. But no one wants to make long movies anymore. 
Hell, most movies don't even want to go for an hour and a half to reach that feature length finish line. But I'm ranting. This movie isn't about them. It's about the Avengers, it's about all of the Marvel superheroes that we've come to know and love, and it's about Thanos beating the ever-living snot out of everybody. Whether or not it's for the true good of the universe is a complete matter of opinion, but that's what we're here to discuss today. Marvel kicking the crap out of all of the characters we love. What could go wrong with this plan? Well, we're facing the after effects of the movie now, so what did go wrong with this plan? Nothing, actually. It was a pretty good movie. This is probably the most important movie in our current line of Marvel movies, and let me explain why. All of these Marvel heroes need to be knocked down several pegs. Some of them a bit more than usual. These characters have too many wins under their belt. The last actual loss that we had was either Asgard being destroyed or the Hydra uprising. Now, I didn't see Thor Ragnarok, but I would have to assume that Thor won in the end because he's in this movie. And according to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Hydra is dead and buried. Point is, the Marvel Universe needed something to come in and knock these guys down a bit. So we brought in the most powerful villain the Marvel Cinematic Universe has ever seen in to beat the ever-living snot out of everybody with his Hand of Fate. You need to drop the Hand of Fate thing because Marvel will never go for your ideas. Fuck off, you talking hockey puck. Now, I know what I said in my previous review. I'm tired of overpowered villains, but this one just feels right. I feel that with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we've beaten down pretty much everything else that they've thrown at us. So we need this new guy that we've been teasing since Avengers 1. Of course, one thing that drives me absolutely crazy with Thanos is that he looks and sounds like Ron Perlman. But that's not a problem because I like Ron Perlman, even though his character is not voiced nor modeled after Ron Perlman even in the slightest. Even though... Come on, he really looks like Ron Perlman. Everyone puts up a damn good performance in this movie as well. I give enormous props for good acting, especially when they have to act against nothing. You can tell that a majority of this movie is filmed in front of a green screen. And when your villain is the fakest thing in the movie, as in CG sort of fake, that's really good. The tension in this movie is pretty high too, which isn't hard to do when you're actually actively killing characters. I won't go into too much detail on that front, but it holds the audience's attention really good. Not only that, but your cliffhanger ending is enough to pull people to the next Avengers movie, but also your after credit scene is enough to pull people over to Captain Marvel which I'm 98% sure is what they were teasing at the end there with the transmission sent thing. It also helps that they kept politics out of the movie, as well as the political correctness and social justice warrior crap. But I think the reason social justice warriors have barely touched the Marvel Cinematic Universe is because, well, it's not just the women wearing tights, everyone's wearing tights. Well, everyone except Doctor Strange, but other than that, everyone's wearing tights and fighting bad guys in very tight pants. So, I don't know, I guess this is the equality women have been looking for. I mean, even Thanos is wearing like a short sleeve shirt in this movie. And is it bad that I kind of agree with Thanos' methods? He's got a point. He may be going about it the wrong way, but Earth does have an overpopulation problem, which has been a long-standing issue that not a lot of people have been talking about. But I usually consider it a bad sign when I start sympathizing with the villain. But we actually get to connect with the guy a little bit on a personal level. And I can actually appreciate where he's coming from a little bit, unlike with the guy in Far Cry 5, which I still consider to be the worst ending of a video game ever made. But don't worry, Infinity War, you're leaps and bounds ahead of Far Cry 5, even if they are different entertainment mediums. But anyway, another thing that's perfectly executed in this movie are just the moments where we get to stop and fucking breathe. This is a fairly high tension movie and you need pauses in the action. And it gives us a couple of opportunities to laugh as well. Which Marvel humor pretty much comes standard with these movies nowadays anyway. But with this we have all of our funny characters together compiled in one movie. And they make it work really, really well. 
The movie also is able to pace itself rather effectively, even if, like, all of the characters that we're following are in, like, ten different places. It doesn't work the best, and it actually raises some questions, how many characters can we follow in one movie? Because like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of characters in this movie. Up until now, we've only followed, like, up to, like, maybe eight characters at one time. The biggest group up we ever had in one movie was probably Civil War, which to this film's credit is actually directed by the same two guys. And I'll admit, I wasn't entirely sure about the Russo brothers directing this movie, they're mainly known for television, but they did a good job. Even if throughout this whole movie we have to follow a small town's worth of Marvel heroes. And above all else, I feel that this movie accomplished what it set out to do, which was knock all of these heroes down a couple of pegs. These characters are not invincible, and a lot of them are dead now. What set Marvel apart from all of the other superheroes in the 50s was that they actually wrote characters with flaws. And that's starting to come out now. Some of them are too weak, some of them let feelings get in the way, and some might actually just be stupid. Stupid. It is about time all of this crap came to bite them in the ass. Because by the time this movie is wrapping up, they're getting desperate. And just when you think they're about to get back up and finish the job and fix everything, that's where Infinity War rolls the credits. So congratulations, Marvel. You did it again. But what did you do poorly? Okay, there isn't a lot, but I go back to what I said earlier. Do we have to have two movies? Movies used to be long and have intermissions and everything. What happened to the film industry? I don't know about other people, but I would have sat through two and a half more hours worth of film. I suppose it isn't too bad, though, since the next film is coming out next year, but still, come on. I get that each of these films grosses at least a billion dollars or more. In fact, this one grossed two billion, but still. And the only other major problem, the really major problem, is that we already know that there are other movies with these characters in them coming out at a later date. Marvel has confirmed a Guardians of the Galaxy 3, so at least we know they're coming back. And Doctor Strange has unfinished business from his movie, so we know he'll be back too. This isn't your fault, movie. It's someone else's fault, but it's still bad. We already know that a whole bunch of these characters are gonna make it out okay because we know that they've already planned additional movies with them in it. And I'm not entirely sure who we should be blaming for this, but someone is surely to blame. Whether it be the executives, whether it be the media, God only knows, but it's a problem. A big problem that needs to be fixed. But again, it's really not the movie's fault. In fact, very few of the problems with this movie are actually the movie's fault. So you know what? It works. So, what's my final verdict on this movie? 9.7. Because I don't like two-parters. I'm gonna go out and say this is the most important important movie in Marvel Cinematic History. Not only is this the climax of the last 10 years of movies, but it set out and accomplished everything that it needed to do. It beat the crap out of everybody. It started wrapping up most of our characters' storylines, which we should have everything wrapped up in the next one. And it made a ridiculous amount of money, making it the fourth highest grossing movie of all time currently. Fuck you, Star Wars The Force Awakens. My advice? Don't miss this one. If you've been following the Marvel movies, you have to see this one. This is what everything has been building up to. But now the big question is, what am I supposed to do? Do I just make a part two to the Infinity War review? What, what do I do? I don't know, I guess I have a year to figure it out. My name is Hunter, and this has been a Hunter Review. 
There once was a guy who created a machine A thing that would take people to and from some other world And when he arrived, he had run into a pony Who smiled and decided that they both should go see a film When that movie sucked, they decided to join forces And then they created a new show called Hunter Reviews